Nicopolis, too. Brand new. And it was a joy for Stanley Livingston to behold. Look here, Flocky. The unveiling isn't until this afternoon, but I'm going to give you a sneak preview. There. Isn't it beautiful? A statue of myself, contributed by a group of citizens who really appreciate what I've done for the zoo. Oh, dear. Looks just like you, Mr. Livingston. I sure hope nothing happens to it. It happens to it? What do you mean? I mean, well, you know how things are always happening around here. Oh, yes. Happening because of you-know-who. You sent for me, Stanley? I suppose you'd like me to make a little speech dedicating your statue. Heaven forbid, I don't want you to even get near that statue. All I want you to do is spread the news that the statue will be officially unveiled by the mayor at 3 o'clock this afternoon. And everyone is to attend. But Stanley, why do I always have to spread the news? Can I... No, go. Come on, Flunky. We'd better get back to the office. So I'm supposed to run around and tell everyone the news, Trump. But with your help, I can save a lot of wear and tear on my feet. Gee, uh, Kennedy, what do you want me to do? Well, I borrowed Stanley's motor scooter, and I thought that you... All right, everybody, go face the big statue I'm mailing at 3 o'clock. You'll hear a terrific speech by his honor the mayor, and you'll enjoy a masterpiece of art. All brought to you by... Kelly, slow down. Kelly, I said slow down. Uh, gee, Kennedy, something's tough. Uh, keep going faster and faster. No! Oh, yes, indeed. 
Well, planning the statue is the first step. The sculptor must draw a sketch of what he wants his statue to look like. All right, get that down, Chumley. First, we draw a picture of Stanley Livingston. Next, the sculptor must make a small model out of clay to look like his sketch. Check. Now, next, we make a small model out of clay. Then what? Well, Tennessee, the third step is usually to make a full-size clay model. And this is very intricate work. For this, the sculptor must make a strong framework of wood and lead pipe. Then onto this, he puts his clay, working slowly and finally molding this into his finished full-size model. Then he's ready to begin his statue. Sorry, all that just to start, but we've got to do it. What next, Mr. Wobby? Then the sculptor begins carving in whatever material he chooses. Wood or stone, or marble. There are bronze statues, too, but you wouldn't be able to do that. You see, to make a statue of bronze, you must first make a mold from your clay model. Then, molten bronze is poured into the mold. Uh, the statue we broke was stone, Mr. Whoopi, so that's what we'll have to use. Uh, thanks a million for teaching us how. You're the greatest. Back in the zoo, Tennessee and Chumley started work immediately. All right, Chumley, here's a pencil and paper. You start drawing a picture of Stanley. I've got to go order a piece of stone. Yeah, okay, Tennessee. Chumley, what is that supposed to be? Yeah, like you said, Tennessee, it's a picture of Stanley Livingston. Oh, I see. Uh, I was holding it upside down. Hmm, not bad. With the sketch finished, the next step was the small clay model. And then it was time to begin the large clay model. Faster with the heat, Chumley. It's getting late. And Tennessee Tuxedo will not fail. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. You stonehead. Put the clay on the statue. All right, Chumley. Stand back. Here comes the stone I ordered. Okay, man. Drop it right here. Yes, right here. Just let it, let it... Oh, phew. They got the drop on me, Chumley. Lend a hand. We've got to start shipping that statue. Uh, and we are gathered here for the dedication of an important new statue for the Megapolis Zoo. And I'm sure that we all, uh... It's a good thing we got that statue finished in time, Chumley. If Stanley Livingston ever knew we'd broken it, he'd have skinned us alive. And, uh, so we reached the moment for the unveiling of this magnificent statue of our famous zookeeper. Just ain't right, Mr. Wizard. No, 
What's wrong, my boy? Your life ain't exciting like it used to be. Well, I came to ask you if you'd let me be one of them FBY unteachables. All right, my boy, but I feel for you. In those times, crime was everywhere. But there was one group of men that could never be taught that crime will pay. This was the unteachable. Now look, unteachable. You want this? Oh, do you want this? No, I'll take this. But why get hurt? All you gotta do is cooperate. Just stop trying to get Blackhead Bart. And we'll make it wait you while. But the unteachable would not be bribed. He was out to get public enemy number one A. This blackhead bark was a bad man. He was a bootlegger, taking the water and making the soda pop without the FBY seal. He lured on had been able to catch the bootlegger in the act. But the wise unteachable was a smart one. He got the big clock and drove right in the big bear. Why keep us up in the air, Unteachable? Subscribe to the bribe. When the wise Unteachable found the doors was made of steel, he got the special pointed truck to batter down the doors. Left you flat, eh, Unteachable? Why not get fat with a little extra cash? The unteachable decided the best way was to infiltrate the mob. He dressed up like the bad man and went into the place where the mob always hung up. Well, here I am, uh, fresh up from the Detroit Dynamite Gang. Uh, tough tutor, they call me. So you're tough, eh? How tough? Uh, just call me tender from now on. Uh, I'm aiming to join up with your mob, uh, Blackhead Bark. Why not? I can use a flying title. Oh, but gee whiz, I can't fly. That's what you think. Ah, uh, the trace on a barroom door. Why have that unwanted feeling? Can't we be crooked friends? Nothing would stop the unteachable. He got the man but kept the mob records. The unteachable was having the fellow tell about the income tax invasion. Uh, well, now, uh, there's not a thing for you to worry a little head about. Uh, not while the unteachables is on the job. Plans blowing up in your face? Why not let Blackhead Bart help you? You do nothing, he pays you. What could be nice? <coughs> Top draw offer, unteachable. Highest type pay, lowest type work. The smart, unteachable thought that the only way to catch the blackhead bark mob was to do some fire trapping. Soon the fire was all trapped in. All right, unteachable. What have you learned so far? Well, uh, not much, sir. Nothing on the phone here, sir. Uh, but the uh, blackhead uh, himself told me he liked flying. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, well, uh, seems like I'm uh, getting something on the phone now. Uh, sounds like uh, somebody saw him wood. I saw you tonight. I got that all feeling. Added it up yet, unteachable? Uh, well, sir, uh, Blackhead Bark likes flying. It uh, seems like he might like sawing. Uh, maybe he's a flying saucer, uh, I figure. Uh, oh, Mr. Wizard. Please, Mr. Wizard. The bottom just fell out of everything. <laughs> Listen, 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 wrong. Time for this one to come home. Okay, Mr. Wizard. It looks like I made a mess out of things again. <laughs> always, always, I tell you, Tudor, be just what you is, not what you is not. Folks, what you is, has the happiest lot. Taffy was a Welshman. Taffy was a thief. 
You ain't kidding, governor. Patty came to my house and stole a piece of beef. Hey, that's a whole cow. So I'm betting my pants a little. I went to Taffy's house. Taffy wasn't home. Taffy went to my house and stole a narrow bone. Narrow bone, that's a whole leg of lamb. I went to Taffy's house. Taffy wasn't in. You can't drink. Sign says out. I know you're in there. I can hear you breathing. Taffy went to my house and stole a silver tin. That's a pin? Just for a declaration. Daffy's house, Daffy in bed, took a barrel bone, hit him in the head. <laughs> I went to Daffy's house, Daffy was in bed. And do you know what the last line is? Of course, took a marrow bone and hit him in the head. <laughs> what do you know? Unhappy ending. <laughs> has his rifle, and you got your ears. 
You mean my gimmick is ears? All you got to do is wiggle them, and the critters will back down. You are sitting in my chair, partner. Nobody sits in that chair but me, partner. That's my chair. Well, find another chair. the frightened, cringing critter he once was. As long as he could wiggle his ears, he enjoyed his role of top critter. Uh, that is, until... Uh, top critter. There's a critter sitting in your favorite chair. Well, lead me to him, Frog. I'll ear him down. Just lead me to him. Uh, top critter, I'll, sir. I'll mow him down is what I'll do. There, 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 there's something you should know. Now, where is the critter that's sitting in my chair? Oh! That's what I was trying to tell you. He's got a gimmick. And so Mr. Rabbit was no longer top critter, because at last he had come up against a critter who had a stronger gimmick than he had. He returned to the rabbit family, although he was never quite as frightened as he had been. Which is the moral of this story? Well, Union, do you know what it is? Sure. Critters may come and critters may go, but gimmicks go on forever. Gimmicks go up, 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 my. I couldn't have put it better myself, Junior.